As usual, the rest of the Atamato by saying no more does a three times. No more does a Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama, Sambu does a. No more does a Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama, Sambu does a. No more does a Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama, Sambu does a. The title of today's summer talk is How to Lead a Life Free from Anxiety or Grief. It is Soka and Pali. Grief and Pali is Soka, meaning troubled state of mind. According to the Abhidhamma, it is Dhamana Sajitasika, Dukkha Virana. Mentally painful or disagreeable feeling or unpleasant feeling. Grief or anxiety is always associated with antipathy and grudge and therefore comically unwholesome. Everyone wishes to live peacefully and happily free from anxiety or grief. Yet, they are inevitably afflicted with grief somehow or other in their lifetime. When we scrutinize the root cause, it is found that people are immersed in sorrowful state due to one of the five forms of ruination or loss. In Pali we call Pyasana. The five forms of ruination or pyasana are 1. Nyadi pyasana, loss of kin or relatives. 2. Boga pyasana, loss of wealth or means. 3. Roga pyasana, deterioration of health due to illness. 4. Deiti pyasana, dissolution of noble concepts. And five, sila jasana, the solution of probity. When one encounters any of these five forms of ruination or loss, one is overwhelmed by anxiety or grief. Then, another cause of anxiety or grief is due to one of the four, and by we call asavas. Asavas have many synonyms. In English, cankers, influxes, things, corruptions, intoxicants, parasites, etc. There are the four fluxions of one. Karma Sava, Crave, the first one is sense desire or sensual desire or common gender, kama sava, then bhava sava, craving for existence, number two, then number three is wrong view, data sava, and number four is ignorance or avaija sava. It is most important to know how to expel grief or anxiety. It cannot be done by scientific experiments. It can only be achieved by our Lord Buddha's Dharma. The Lord Buddha has advocated the sure way of eradication of grief and his admonishment on Satipatthana Sutta or the four foundations of mindfulness. Buddha said, Oh dear sons and daughters, he said, Ekayano, there is no other way. This Satipatthana Vipassana Bhavana or mindfulness inside meditation is the one and the only way for you all to attain Nibbana and deliverance from anxiety, grief and all kinds of suffering. Now, 
Let us study about someone who made use of our Lord Buddha's admonishment to eliminate his grief as recorded in Kalanaka text. The incident took place in Indian, the time Indian capital city of Rajagaha, over 2,500 years ago. At that time, Lord Buddha was residing at the King Baby Sara Mahajasa, Maharajas Viluvana Garden Monastery. As was the customary of the lady to see solace from the Triple Gem Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha whenever they were afflicted with calamities. One day this Maharaja King Bhimisara's youthful son, Prince Abhaya Raja Kumara, he appeared before the Lord Buddha. He bowed down in front of our Lord Buddha, wailing and imploring to quench his grief-stricken burning heart at the death of his beloved Dansagya. The accident had been at the height of entertainment party for the youthful prince, given in honor of his victorious achievements on the battlefront. The king has granted his son seven days of sovereign power with all the luxuries and grandeur. On the last day of festivities, while the young beautiful dancer was charming the youthful prince with all her arts and craft, she dropped dead at the climax of the garden revelry. He was so tormented by this harsh catastrophe, he felt as if his heart and soul were burning under a seven scorching sun. In the midst of his tragedy, it came to his senses that the Lord Buddha is the only refuge to alleviate his suffering. And so thinking, he went to the Lord Buddha immediately after the cremation of the young dancer girl. On arrival at the Lord Buddha's monastery, he instantly entreated the Lord Buddha to extinguish his burning heart. With sweet, compassionate voice, Lord Buddha consoled him. O oh, young prince, brace yourself up, be mindful, and do not be desperate. Due to your firm attachment to this girl, you have shed infinite amount of tears at the loss of her also in your past existences. On hearing Lord Buddha's soothing words, the young prince's grief alleviated and he gained spiritual urgency and the wake of apprehension at the prospect of a continuum of rebirth and suffering. Then the Lord Buddha continued. He said, now be attentive, be cautious, and just consider how your body is like a king's decorated coach, which gradually loses grandeur and finally disintegrates. Your body a composite of five aggregates of physical and mental phenomena is impermanent, arising and dissolving moment to moment. It is unsatisfactory, impersonal, and is nothing worthy of attachment. The young prince, while listening the Lord Buddha's admonishment very attentively, he contemplated on all physical and mental phenomena. With clear comprehension, he perceives the impermanence of all meditation objects and their unsatisfactoriness and egolessness. His meditation insight progresses step by step, and finally he realizes Nibbana by achieving the Sodapati Meganyana. Thereby, he was delivered from his suffering and he was suffused with bliss and tranquility. 
So also may you all meditate diligently in practice the Satipatthana Vipassana Bhavana or mindfulness insight meditation and attain various insight jnana in the shortest possible time. Now, if you all have questions, you may ask. If no questions for the moment, let me continue to discuss our last our discussion in our last talks. <clears throat> and every talk we gave, you can easily be aware of the, the importance of the object and this Vipassana Bhavana inside meditation as Nama and Rupa or five gates. Here to the mention of five gates. And in our last talks, we are studying about these Nama Rupa or five aggregates. Briefly speaking, just Nama and Rupa. Rupa is corporeal D phenomena, so called as being, especially we human beings. And this Vipassana Bhavana, as I often stress, we take this physical body, or in other words, Paramatha Dhamma, ultimate truth as meditation objects and we had to observe these objects. So we must clearly understand what is Nama and what is Rupa, meaning what is mind and what is matter. And that we've been discussing in our last talks and let us continue to discuss about it. Why we had to take this Nama Rupa or Fire Head as our object of meditation? That too I have given already the reason. And Dhamma Jakapo Dhanasutta. This is the main, the beginning and the end of all Buddha's teaching. The main essence of our Buddha's teaching is the full noble truth. Noble truth of suffering, noble truth of the cause of suffering. Noble truth of the cessation of suffering. Noble truth of the way or the path to gain this cessation of suffering. And, and the first noble truth, first Buddha elaborated the gross suffering that is we are experiencing, everybody is experiencing in our lifetime. And when after finishing that, he concluded, Sankhati na Banju Bara Nakata Doka. Briefly speaking, suffering means this five aggregates of clinging or grasping. Because we cling to or we grasp these five aggregates as I, my, and my ego or my other. So this is the main cause of suffering. So we must understand this clearly. That's how, that's why we have to take either this as Nama Rupa or five gates as our object of meditation. We have to have clear understanding of this first as Nama and Rupa, so called a being or a person is just composed of psychophysical complex, this physical body or material phenomena and the mind. So first you must understand the basic difference of the mind and the matter. Matter is composed of four gross elements. Actually in Abhidhamma Buddha has expounded 28 material phenomena, never mind. And our meditation and practical Meditation, we need to know only these four elements that constitute matter. And 
that to have many times explained and most of you are familiar about how to verify in your meditation these four gross elements of one but we or earth element two harbor or water element three dejo or heat element and four wire or wind element so that how to identify how to experience in your meditation I've already explained many times just let us run through again these material phenomena you experience in your meditation like in steady meditation when you are noting rising falling of the abdomen rising falling of the movement of the abdomen is when element when element characteristic of when is element of motion so the movement you are noting is when element so it is super or material phenomena or physical phenomena the mind that is noting as rising and falling is through nama or mental phenomena and this much difference you must be able to discern so also in walking meditation when you are noting the steps either right step, left step or lifting, putting down lifting, moving, putting down these are noting the element of motion why or that but if you feel this feet as heavy or light it is but the way that to add element then if you feel moisture or sweat it is water element if you feel heat or cold or when you touch the floor hardness or heat or cold or these are the jota too or heat element like that you can verify and you are practice of meditation And noting seeing, when you see something and noting that seeing, see, the sight in your eye is rupa or physical phenomena or material phenomena. And that seeing consciousness that arises or just simply seeing is the by mind and that is mental phenomena. So also when you are noting the sound, like now you are hearing my voice. The sound and the ear is rupa. The hearing consciousness is nama. So also the nose and the smell is rupa. The smelling consciousness that arises is nama. So also when you are eating, the taste and the tongue is rupa. And the tasting consciousness that arises is nama. And when you have come into contact with the body, the body and the tactile object is rupa. The body consciousness is nama, like that. So you, you can identify mind and matter in your meditation. So this physical phenomena or material phenomena being gross is easily one can experience and we have many times talk about it. So now let us go to a little bit more difficult the element out of the term mental phenomena of mind. Let us try to understand something about mind. How to verify this mind or mental phenomena in your meditation. Asarira during the man Egajara Asarira Kuhasaya Tanjita he, he gives this four characteristics of the mind. First is during the man directly translated mind can travel very far and wide. Meaning mind can take up object however regardless of the dis distance however far an object is one can think of like though you may be sitting here when you think of about your home or the places you've been before you can easily recall those experiences that shows that the mind immediately can take up 
regardless of the distance the object it can experience. So that is the first requisite of my mind can take up any object regardless of the time and distance. You remember that this is a these important characteristics only I am presenting to you to help understand in your meditation practice. The first is Churangama, meaning the mind, mind nature is mind always inclined towards the object, however far or near. Without the object, mind cannot arise. It falls back to subconscious level of life continuum which we and body we call Pavanga Chitta. So mind nature is mind arise only when there is object. And the object may be near or far, regardless of the distance. Mind can take up any object that inclines towards it. And it is it can arise only with the object. Like fish being a body animal it can survive only in war. So soon mind can arise only when there is object. Then the second characteristic Buddha said is Eka Jara. Meaning Eka means one. Jara means if one is about alone, Buddha said, just to understand use and layman stuff. Meaning mind can arise only one at a time, one thought, movement arise one at a time. Meaning mind can take up only one object at a time. And that is very important characteristic to remember and not to confuse your experience. Like supposing when you are noting a wandering mind. If you are noting mind become strong or fully aware, the thought cannot continue. That's how we know that wandering mind or thoughts like wandering, wandering, thinking, thinking. Not to just push it away. If you note it that way, if your noting mind is strong, because mind can take up when the, the noting function, then it cannot think. Because it can take up only one object at a time. So we have to use this characteristic of the mind or the function of the mind and giving you the, just to note it, like when the thoughts or wandering mind comes, just no wandering, wandering, or thinking, thinking. When you are noting becomes strong, then the thought cannot continue, it stops, then come back to main object. When you are noting like these six and door objects, like seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, like now, when you are looking at me and listening to me, you think that you see me, my image, as well as hear my voice at the same time. No. Because of this principle, and it is true also if you can think it carefully. When you hear my voice, you cannot see me, for you may be looking at me. And when you see me, you cannot you miss my words and you don't hear me. Because the door is different. The organ that perceives the object is different. Because the eye cannot hear, the ear cannot see. It's easy to understand. Eye's function is to see. Ear's function is to hear. So that's why when your mind is seeing, you cannot hear. When your mind is hearing, you cannot see. That shows that what Buddha said is correct. Eka jara, mind can arise only one at a time. But because it arises and pass away, arises and pass away so far, Buddha said Buddha can only see in a twinkle of an eye. Just one twinkle of an eye, except billions of thought movements arise and pass away. That's why we think that we are seeing and hearing at the same time, because it's been arising and passing away very fast. 
Actually, when you see, you don't hear. When you hear, you don't see. Because the door is different, as I just now said. The ear cannot see. The eye cannot hear. The eye just see. The ear hears. So when hearing, no seeing consciousness can arise. When he seeing, no hearing consciousness arise. That's the meaning of ekachara. And the third characteristic is Buddha said, mine is asarira. Asarira means A is negative. Sarira means this physical body, meaning it is not from Buddha. That two, we have basically distinguished between the two. What is the mind? Mind is no matter. It is not a matter. It cannot be identified like material phenomena. Four material mat matter is made up of four gross elements. We call Maha Buddha. Maha means great Buddha's elements. Great elements, four great elements. And if it is matter, we must be able to identify with these characteristics. So, the we do to or earth element is solidity or hardness, softness, roughness, smoothness that you are experiencing in a meditation. Then we can easily identify that this is rupa, but we do to earth element. So also water is fluidity, it has a cohesive property, a moisture, wet or like sweating, saliva, when you go to toilet, urinating, all these are water element. We can identify matter. But, but mind being no these no, not, not composed of these gross elements. That is why Buddha said asalira. So we must be able to discern the two differently. If you can identify any unit with this material phenomena, it is a matter. And asalira, if it is not matter, it is mind. So what is the mind? Mind is no matter. What is matter? What is matter? Never mind. It is never mind. So just remember these by the mnemonics. What is matter? Never mind. What is mind? No matter. That's why Buddha said, Asarira. So these are the three characteristics. Durangamma, Ekajara, Asarira. The fourth characteristic Buddha expounded here is Kuhasaya. Kuhasaya means mind resides in a cave, hollow cave. So here, uh, not much matter about a practical meditation, but those who study uh, those who take interest in scholarly studies and when one tends to compromise with the modern medical science, one may be a little bit confused. Pro Buddha said mind reside, mind dwells in cave and a hollow organ means. And in Abhidhamma he said, Kuhabo Kadye Vatu. Because any consciousness to arise, then there must be material base. That's why we are made up of mind and matter or nama trupa. So the consciousness to arise, heart base, Buddha said. And medical science said mostly attribute to this mind's function is by the brain. So how to compromise these two? Yeah, because as you all know, Western science, they only emphasize on matter and material phenomena, and they don't pay much emphasis on mental side. All living beings, except the four topmost Arupa rams and one Asanya Sata ram, Examining this five, 
all other beings and other planes of existences are made up of mind and matter, Nama and Rupa. And out of the two, mind is the chief or the main. Buddha said, Mano Bopangama Dhamma. Mind is the forerunner of all phenomena in this world and our life. So, in Buddhist philosophy, we give emphasis, we give emphasis to mind. Not that we can neglect matter, but I said emphasis, because mind is the one, the forerunner of every phenomenon. Like why all you all are here, because in your mind you intend to do intensive practice or to learn Dharma, and then you are here. Mind, mind leads you here. And mind is the one, mind is that leads a person whether to do good or to do bad, to go evil or to, to be a good, noble. Like all, everything depends on the mind. This physical body is just instrumental for these mind and mental factors to arise. So the, the, we give the mind emphasis in Buddhist teaching. And our Buddha teaching, there are two levels of the mind. One is subconscious mind. And this is the mind that is perpetuating our life for one existence from the moment of conception under death. And this mental stream is called Bhavanga Jeta, one type of mind. Bhavanga Jeta, it is translated in English as life continuum because it perpetuates or it continues from the moment of conception until we die when the last mind in this life is called Chuti Jeta, death consciousness. The very first consciousness that arises at the time of conception is Pati Sandhi Chaita, free-linking consciousness. And between the two is the continuous stream of this life continuum we call Bhavanga Chaita. I think if you all, some of, or all of you might have know the streams and rivers, they have two currents, and the one is undercurrent and the superficial current. Undercurrent is the steady flow of that particular river or the stream that's going on in the lower level of the lower depth of the river. And above the current is due to uh, influence by winds and other things, the another uh, flow of river, superficial current and undercurrent. So also the mind is in two stages. One is we call this Bhavanga Chaita or subconscious mind. And when the, when some object is presented to our sense of doors, like when a, a person is coming towards the eye door, then this Bhavanga Chaita is cut off and it arises into Viti Chaita. Pariva Viti Jita means process thought. And for the same consciousness to arise. That is how the mind acts. It sinks back to Bhavanga Jita. And when there is object to take up, it comes up to Viti Jita. So it is alternating. When Viti Jita arises, after arising it dissolves, then it falls back to Bhavanga Jita. Like that is moving about. So this Bhavanga Jita, to continue a life continuum, we call to continue this life process or Chivitang Zaya, it has to be on this heart. And that at least with the medical science, the heart is contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing as long as we are living. When the heart stops to beat, there's a time to die. And there's a time for this Bhavanga Jaita to stop. 
that is that goes duty jeta or that consciousness and another life begins and another existence so please remember out of the two types of my bhavanga jeta or life continuum peace on the heart so that is why put us that cardiac quarter peace material peace is the heart peace but for the we teach jeta process thought to arise the pain brain functions another example if you know this electrical can energy the main station is generating energy all the time and that is like bhavan ka jeta and here you when you want it now we open and now the we the, the current electrical energy is coming and when you go back when you switch off this shut it off but the energy is still there coming only thing we don't use it that particular light so also when we are not seeing then the mind goes back to bhavanga jeta and the point we are not hearing like when we go back and sleep sleep is subconscious mind and that is bhavanga jeta is taking place the bhavanga jeta or life continuum as long as we are living from moment of conception until the death this mind to arise is by the heart and when only the objects come to the sense doors to see to hear to smell to taste to, to experience the tactile sensation then the brain has to function to uh free play or to gain information about our experience So please remember that is true. Bhavanga Jeta and Vedi Jeta. So the mind's nature is it inclines to towards the object. Without the object, the mind cannot arise. The mind means this Vedi Jeta cannot arise and it falls back to Bhavanga Jeta life continuum. So this this mind is. Like this is the criteria level of consciousness. If it goes down below, sub means below, below the conscious level that we call subconscious mind. That is same mind that is taking place when we have fallen asleep. And if it is much more, it sinks to below. It becomes unconscious. Some of the feelings or sensations are lost. And much more deeper. we call coma almost most of the sense sensory function is lost and after that coma death so that's how it thinks and even it comes up to from coma to unconscious unconscious to subconscious subconscious to conscious level then we became conscious so that's why dreams always come just before we wake up and everybody experiences dreams whenever we dream we wake up before we finish because when we are about to wake up only the mind can take up uh, these objects and they present it to our mind main mind as dreams actually these are false visions or false wake up just like when you adjust the video or television before you get a proper focus in all kinds of weird images or sounds are appearing in them said like that so these dreams are to the same mostly in coordinate subjects or things we see or hear in the tree this is because when it is not totally unconscious and not totally fully conscious yet at the criteria level and these images started appearing and we take it as dream so basically just rupa and nama nama is mine actually and then nama and paramatha dhamma and abhidhamma buddha 
Class Y and two minor is concomitants or accompaniments and body we call Jeta Sika. Jeta and Jeta Sika minus and body Jeta is mental fighters or accompaniments are Jeta Sika minor mental. So it comes under collectively as Nama and Rupa. So for regarding this mind, Buddha even as far as classifying 81 mundane jeta, 8 super mundane total 89, and jeta sika or mental fighter 52, like that because of his immense wisdom. Never mind. And our medical meditation, we need to discern four of these jetas because it is important for meditational experience. So four mental aggregates, we call it, four groups that a meditator must be familiar under this nama. Like we have four gross elements under rupa. Here to four mind and mental jeta and jeta sika and this nama group or mental aggregates. One is Virana. Virana is feeling or sensations. Because we we are called sentient beings because we are we get we have the we are endowed with the power to experience sensations. So the first group of this mind is Virana or feeling or sensations. Then the second mental fighter is sanya or perception. The word perception, as you all know, is making a mark. Uh, with this modern computer science, like collecting data or loading the machine for future reference. So also, we remember things collect characteristic features we remember it for future reference like when we were babies when our mind started to grow when we are aware of our environment um, this is a mother this is the father brothers so on or this is food milk gradually we learn and remember these are the function of the sanya so sanya is that's why translated as perception this is a second mental group. Because it completes 
the process of this mind. So please remember there are four groups, or four mental groups. Vedana, feeling or sensation, Sanya, perception, Sankara, volition, and Vijnana, consciousness. These are four aggregates of four groups that come under Nama. And that four groups under the Rupa is but we are body, joy, what, why? So as a meditator we must be able to identify and see these so-called five aggregates. One Rupa Kana, Rupa material aggregate and four mental aggregates. Kita hontunya. <laughs>